leaving on Missouri, we'll come back closer to home now, uh, for our final speaker, last but not least, uh, a man that, that, that I know very, very well, been in the trenches with him on the, on the political side of things and been happy to be there, someone you know very well too, uh, Representative Paul Kirkman. Now, Paul, uh, Paul, uh, I'll give you the basic bio here, represents part of Franklin County, the new District 109. He's my neighbor just to the west. I'm in 110 now. Uh, in the Missouri House of Representatives, first elected back in 2010. He is the chairman of, and I'm, I'm very happy to say he's the chairman of this because I appointed him so. One of the things you do with speakers, appoint people to committees. Do you think fits with their talents and their skill set. So, of course, I appointed Paul to be the chairman of the Downsizing State Government Committee. <laughs> page last week. Thank you, Speaker Jones. I'm going to do just that. So, <laughs> a man of few words uh, at times, but of great action is, is Paul Kirkman. Uh, he served on active duty in the U.S. Marine Corps from 1999 to 2003, attaining the rank of sergeant. Let's thank him for his service to our country and for his service to our state. Representative Paul Kirkman. About six or seven years ago, he started a business 
He went from himself working it, he was able to become so successful that just in the short time span of just a handful of years, he, was, he had to hire eight more people to help him do the job that people were coming for him to do. But unfortunately, several years ago, there were certain economic measures put into place that put him at a competitive disadvantage against his competitors. We have to be very careful. It was already touched on, uh, Representative Zaire talked about it earlier, and I get to sit on her committee, on the uh, Committee of Economic Development. We've got to be very careful with these tax credits because what all too often, a lot of times, these tax credits, when they're introduced, it creates instability in the marketplace. It creates a certain level of unequality or inequality under the law. So this man in my district had to start firing people. So now he's down to three employees, including himself, that works. And the reason he has to do that is because now he's competing with somebody who's literally, literally just across the street. And he has to pay taxes to make up, or basically has to pay taxes so his competitor does not have to pay taxes. He always put somebody at a competitive disadvantage. We have to make room for the for the tax for the um, tax incentives that somebody else might be receiving. All men are created equal. Whether it's certain moral or social issues, or whether it's economic issues, we've got to make sure that there's equality under the law, because if there's no equality under the law, you might as well just throw your hands up and surrender, because you're already at, uh, at an economic disadvantage. The second one, also, all men are created equal, they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. A lot of people don't understand really what liberty is. A lot of people don't understand what rights are. Do you have to ask permission from somebody else to exercise what you're told is a right? Do you? No, I don't, I don't think that you do. Because nobody owns me. Barack Obama, not my congressmen, not my senators, nobody owns me. They have a job because 230-some years ago, the people of America decided to ratify the Constitution and give senators, give congressmen, give a president, give Supreme Court justices a job. We created them, just like Senator Lundy said, right? Yeah. So if here's how it works. If it, for example, Second Amendment. The Second Amendment says that it is the right of the people to keep and bear arms. If it's my right, why in the world does Barack Obama or any number of totalitarian thinkers in the U.S. Congress think that we have to ask for their permission to carry a gun when it's my right to carry it? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Permission to do something that is already rightfully ours. Economic development. There's a, you know, in August alone, Missouri lost about 11,500 people out of the jobs market. That's a lot of people that suddenly can't make enough money to support themselves. It's a lot of people that suddenly don't have security in any kind of employment. 11,500 people. Probably everybody in here decorated their own home. Probably. Yeah. I had to have a little help with mine. All right? But probably everybody in here knows a little bit about what kind of drapes to put over your windows. Probably everybody in here knows what kind of paint to look good for your car. Maybe one of those 11,500 people, maybe one of them said, you know, I'm pretty good at this. Maybe I'll just uh, do it for other people and just try to make a few bucks. Did you know that in the state of Missouri, if you want to be an interior designer, you have to ask permission from the state? You see, why do we have to ask permission from the state to do something that really we already have a right to do? And that is the right of self-preservation, is it not? Just like the yeah, Second Amendment. Yeah, that's right. Now, I understand that there has to be regulations in the marketplace because the purpose of government, according to the Declaration of Independence, okay, the purpose of government is to secure our rights, secure our liberty. So any regulation in the government, the government really only has jurisdiction in any particular market only, really, only if it's to make sure that it's protecting you from fraud and abuse. Yeah. The government should not be the sponsor of fraud and abuse. <laughs> there Send a message and maybe just have a little bit of humor instead of a gavel. I might use a hatchet that first day. <laughs> yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot that can be done in our state to draw people. We have to be an attractive place for people who want to come and work. The way to do that is make sure that they know that, hey, when you come into Missouri, we're going to treat you, small businessman with eight employees, we're going to treat you just like you would some huge corporation. We're not going to make sure that you have a competitive disadvantage. There's things that we can do to make people want to flock to America. We have to be an attractive place for people. And say, that's where I want to go. That's where I have the most security to pursue happiness. And I think that we can do that. And under the, uh, the leadership of Representative Jones, I think we have a great opportunity to see that happen. Um, 
don't think I already said this, but uh, last, last year, that sound money bill, the first time we voted on it, there was a lot of members that were out of the house because they were at another function, and the bill failed. <laughs> By one vote, because one guy on the other side of the aisle decided to change his mind right at the last second. Um, I didn't even know this was possible, but what Representative Jones, what Speaker Jones was able to do was he was able to get somebody from the prevailing side, somebody that had voted no, to file a motion, to make a motion to reconsider the vote, and we were able to bring the vote back, thanks to Speaker Jones, resurrected, really, I mean, literally bring it back from the dead on the House floor the same day and get it over to the Senate. And so when you have people that will stand up and do that kind of leadership and do something, a little bit of outside the box thinking because they know that there's that there's good things in certain bills. <laughs> Unfortunately.